Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Impact Farming Show. I am so very excited to have Elaine Fraze, Canada's Farm Whisperer, back on the show. Elaine, how are you? I'm great, and it's good to be in conversation with you again. So I'm sending you my little heart. Oh, beautiful. I have a heart, too. I should do that. I always love having you on the show, my beautiful friend. Today, we are going to speak about conflict on the farm. Are you ready, Elaine? I am grabbing my famous undiscussable bull by the horns, so I'll do it by the horns. And away we go, because again, conflict avoidance and procrastination in my world is killing agriculture, and I want more farm families to get this done in a very positive way, Tracy. That's my mission, to find harmony through understanding no matter what the tension points are in the current reality of the farm team. I love it. So by this point, I think everybody knows who you are, and I'm going to include links to your website where people can learn more about you. Unless you want to do an intro, I'm thinking let's dive right in and talk about conflict, Elaine. Right. So the only thing that's different since you and I have talked last time on this um, platform is I now have a coaching team of five coaches who are highly trained in conflict resolution. Okay. Uh, Glenn Dodgerum, who's in Lethbridge, Jenna Zerba, who's a palliative care nurse in Dauphin, um, Lydia Carpenter, who many people might know from Luna Field Farm, who's a first generation farmer in direct farm marketing, and Kaylin Spain from the Sperling area, who has a degree in conflict resolution. And Crisol Gonzalez, who is in Mexico, and I've actually been to her farm. She's married to a dairy farmer in Mexico. So we also provide service in Spanish and English. Oh, wow. And sometimes high, high German and low German if necessary. And that would be Crisol's department. All of this to say, Tracy, as I am aging as a coach, I also want to pass the torch with other professionals who are willing to do work just like you and I are doing today on Zoom. And we've been reaching out and really penetrating a lot of ranchers and farmers across North America. So we're excited that we have a coaching team and all that people have to remember when they listen to us is just Google farmfamilycoach.com. It's also a lot of our social media handle and, and uh, people will find us. Perfect. And I'll put show links in the right. show notes as mm -hmm. well. I'm so happy, Elaine, that you're starting to clone and pass down your wisdom. Because I'll transition planning. I better walk the talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't quite think of it that way. That is. You yeah, gotta... I'm telling all kinds of other people. This, so this is my, my technically, I guess, my fourth succession plan, because I've done with my, one with my in-laws in 1992, one with my own parents and their farm in 1998, and then Wes and I with our son when he came back to farm uh, 10 years ago, and now... Uh, my coaching practice, yes, because the work was never going to be done, Tracy. So we need to dive in to help people out with some practical tools. Ooh, excellent. Okay, good. And we'll include notes, all that good stuff, like I said, at the bottom for anybody in the audience that wants to learn more and work with you. And we'll talk okay. about that throughout the chat as well. So why don't we dive right in? Conflict. Myself and many others, as soon as we hear the word conflict, we think negative because nobody wants to be in conflict, but I've chatted with you enough to know that conflict is not always bad. Can you share your thoughts on that? Well, it really depends on where you're coming at with your mindset, right? And so we in our, in our team say conflict is not bad, but good conflict can give you a lot of clarity. And in our team, we talk about the clarity of expectations and um, many people know I'd specialize in farm transition work around communication and conflict resolution to help everybody get clarity of expectations, certainty of timelines and agreements, and a commitment to action. And what happens is this tension, and I just coached a young woman this morning, and they're a lovely family, really good culture on their farm. But the problem is, she says, Elaine, there's this underlying tension. Everybody knows it's there, thus the bull in the middle of the room. We know it's there, but now we have to get it on the table. And good conflict requires that you attack the issue, the bull in the middle of the room, not the other people sitting around. And so we see conflict as a journey and conflict resolution can bring lots of clarity. And it also ties in, Tracy, to what I've spoken about before, about the culture of your farm. The culture of your farm is the glue that holds your farm together. And it's three components, what you believe. So your core values, 
So if you believe conflict, any conflict is bad and you keep avoiding it, you're not going to get clarity because you're not going to come to the table because it's too scary. People are terrified of opening up a box with the in-laws or opening up a box of trauma or trouble with um, a successor that might have a different business plan than they do, right? So it's what they believe, but it's also their behavior. And I've been on farms where I've told young men, it's not a good idea that your father swears at you every morning when he comes to meet you in the shop. And they say, Elaine, that's not normal. And I go, well, it might be normal on your farm, but not on other farms I've seen. And it's not a good idea. So sometimes the behavior that you're getting, you're getting that behavior because you keep, you know, stuffing it down or not dealing with it and you need to deal with it. And then the third thing is how you make decisions. And Tracy, you know, there's this book called The Father Factor by Stephen Poulter. 20% of fathers are compassionate mentors. And that's what I want for 100% of farm founders, whether they're male or female, to mentor the next generation into a great space so that the founders can step back without stepping away, which is Dick Whitman's term, or that the, the next generation has really good clarity about where their equity is going to be, right? So conflict, if you live in a low conflict farm, you have all kinds of good emotional energy to spend on farming, managing your farm, and also enjoying your family. But if you are going to work every day with a brain that feels like this, that's bad news. And John Gottman has a great book called um, Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. And one of his principle is keeping um, short, uh, making quick repairs, what he calls it. And so that's what I also want to throw out to your audience is what would it look like if you got really strong and confident in good conflict behavior so that you could make quick repairs so that it never got into a time bomb or what another writer, the man who wrote Fault Lines, calls a volcanic event. Mm -hmm. And we, we know far too many volcanic event stories in agriculture. And it's time, hashtag healing stories, number four, ag. Now, right? We want healing stories. We don't want any more of these time bomb decision making events or volcanic events. So that's a long answer to why I think conflict is not a bad thing, but we need to unpack it more for people. I love it. Okay. So you work with farm families all the time, everywhere for many, many years. What areas do farm families experience the most amount of conflict what what's so keeping had, farmers up at night yeah so what's keeping farmers up at night young ones and old ones is anxiety mm. and 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 how I know this to be true is I have a key challenge audit which is available under the coaching tab on my website if anyone just wants to download it but what it says in the middle I ask them to to check off like to do a self-assessment on what is keeping you awake at night often it's fairness uh, lack of income, all the wealth tied up on the business side of the farm without any liquidity on what we call farm liquidity from the personal wealth bubble side. So that's an issue. But the key one is in the middle of the audit, Tracy, and this is what it says. One of my key challenges is tick, decreasing my anxiety over the uncertainty of the future. So in coaching, it's called the neutral zone. So if I go like this, gear shift in neutral, I'm not going anywhere. My old truck won't go forward until I get it into first gear, right? And so for young people, and so for this woman I was coaching this morning, who's in her mid thirties, according to how I was trained as a Hudson coach, if you are approaching 40, you need to start having power and control over your future, particularly farm equity. And she said, wow, that's an interesting timeline, Elaine. I never thought about it that before because she's quite happy in her role right now, part-time. And she also has a very supportive income stream from her working spouse, who's in a different industry or same industry, different business. So, so what is keeping farmers awake at night is they wake up and, oh my goodness, I'm 65. And there's some degree of humiliation going on too. We all know in grain farming in particular, the cattle people, not so much because they've had, we're at a, a nice high, higher part of the cattle cycle right now, thankfully. And that's why you're smiling, which is great. Yay. Yay, Anthony. Yay. <laughs> Yay, Tracy. So that's good for you as cattle producers. But for grain farmers, the last few years have been fairly good, except for pieces of central, south central Saskatchewan and southeastern Alberta who have had drought for seven years. So here's the deal. 
why are people anxious is I call it the pain of not knowing. And so what needs to end is the anxiety and the uncertainty and the not knowing. And when, uh, what needs to begin is conversations, Tracy. And so if you think of a big princess tin oil filter that you can buy at Princess Auto, the work we do in coaching, we always say counseling is about recovery. Coaching is about discovery and moving forward. I want to bring farm families and prepare them individually first as couples and then bring them to the table so that they can say, I'd like to have the bull. I'm just curious, dad, what does it look like to you to step back without stepping away? I'm just curious, mom, are you going to move or do you want to stay where you are? And if you're going to stay with you are, where you are, where are we going to live? And then the third thing is, how are we going to be fair? Or what does fairness look like to you, to the non-farm siblings? And you and I have talked about this on other episodes, so people can can check out those or go to my YouTube site and watch Finding Fairness and Farm Transition. But the conflict happens when you don't know what the future looks like. So the more talking and respectful, safe talking you can do, the more clarity you can get for all kinds of things, for the for the business, for the family, for the estate, for your communication plan, for how all of you want to live as a family in terms of your lifestyle plan. I know Dr. John Fast one time, he spit out like about 10 different plans. But the one I want to focus on first is communication and conflict resolution. I love it. Because once you get that foundation, then you can talk about hard things and still be respectful and still create solutions. I love it. Hey, Elaine, I want to quickly give a plug here. You're going to be discussing this subject at Farm Management Canada's conference coming up in November. And you're going to be talking about the similar material here. And I know one of the things that you're going to be diving in with the audience is positive conflict behaviors and destructive yes. ones that need to be let go. Do you want to share that with our audience? I know you're going to be sharing that at the event and we're been helping beating, to promote. So been beating this drum probably for almost two decades. Happy to share Excellent. and happy to be practical to your own. So what I'm going to hold up is the guide. It's called the conflict. You can see their conflict oh, dynamic yeah. profile. Yeah. It's an actual online tool that was developed by St. Eckert College in St. Peter's, Florida. And I studied with Craig Rundy, who wrote the book Conflict Competent Leader years ago. Anyway, People want to buy this. They just have to go to my website to the shop and you can actually buy the online profile, but I need their emails. And then, and then they do it online. Okay. And once they do it online, push, I, I get a notification and I send them a report and here's the five positive behaviors. And I, I know them off by heart, but I'll turn to the table of contents here just so I make sure I get them all in the right order. The order doesn't really matter. But the first one is, can you put yourself in your mother or father's shoes and vice versa? Do they know what it's like to be 36 years old, have a young family and not have any equity and just be an employee of the farm? And hopefully they're getting fair compensation. So can you put yourself in the, can you take, create and put yourself in the other person's shoes? Next one that's really strong is, are you willing to create solutions? Because here's the deal. I thought that I was moving out of this house in 2020 when my son and daughter-in-law were coming back to the farm. No, that plan changed for many different reasons. And so we had to create a new solution. And what was the new solution? They were going to build the, the new house. God bless them. Great. They got to spend oodles of money building a new house. I got to stay put. So everybody's happy, right? So creating, and sometimes Another thing that when we talk about discuss the undiscussable is don't prejudge the outcome because people will come into a meeting, Tracy, and say, there's only one way we can do things on this farm. And you go, oh, well, would you like to hear what uh, five or 600 of the other families I've coached have done in this situation? And you see, that's the, that's the beauty. And I'm not just trying to get business for myself. I want everybody to have a really robust, good team of advisors so that they are getting the best intel for the situation for the decisions that they have to make because being in transition and having successors and founders and all this good stuff it's never done tracy you just can't say well by next january this will all be in the can well it might be in documents and it might be in share agreements and all that good stuff but it's really not done until you're dead and then of course it becomes your estate plan right so 
Can you put yourself in the other person's shoes? Secondly, can you create solutions? But here's the hard one. Can you express how you feel? That's why I have my heart. So expressing emotions in some families is just suck it up, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. We have all these really awful languages in agriculture that are not good for your mental health. And we are now big fans. Another new book I have for you since we last talked is called Nonviolent Communication. I'll put it up for you. And it's by Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. Okay. And what we like about this as a coaching team and like his model is he makes observations. So you do observe what you see going around. But his second thing is, how does this make you feel? I'm disappointed, dad. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm just, I'm actually considering leaving because we've been trying to get some traction here on this plan for over five years. And you just keep me away from the table and you just say oh we'll do it after harvest oh no we'll do it after christmas oh no we'll do it after after we go away for some holidays in the winter no 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 we'll go after calving no no we'll go after planting no we'll do it after spring no we'll do it after after fungus signing in july oh no we'll do it after harvest and where are we 20 years later we've just gone through a whole year exactly so perspective taking creative solutions sharing emotions and the next one is reaching out so reaching out in, in the dynamic profile is not unsimilar to, to Rosenberg's thing around need. So I could say to you, Tracy, if I see a tear rolling down your cheek and meaning, um, Tracy, what do you need right now? Or what do you need from this farm that you're not getting? Can you imagine, Tracy, all the farm women listening to this that would fall out of their chairs if their successor came barreling into the kitchen and said, hey, mom, what do you really need? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and that's life changing. Like that. Right. It's very powerful yeah. because we need different things at a different time and conflict really happens. And this is what one of my coaches, Kaylin Spain said, Elaine, what conflict really is, is when needs are not connecting. When, when two different people are coming to a situation and they're not getting what each of them needs. And how do you know what they need? You got to have a conversation because I, Tracy cannot read your mind right now. And so the last two are to delay your response, which is where people say, oh, you know, just count to 10, but you cannot delay your response for five years. And that's what's happening. People just, oh, you know, after harvest, all that bit, or, you know, when such and such a magical thing happens and then it never happens. And the last thing, of course, is the adapting. The other thing I just wanted to hold out, this is, this is my conflict resolution 101. Hi tech here, Tracy, here we go. We're not sharing the screen. Love it. But that this part here about, you know, first of all, coming from curiosity, but the intent is in your brain, it's in your head. And people don't know what that is until they see this, your action or your words, right? And then you, then it either makes you feel good or it has an effect on you. Intent, action, effect. And it's conflict resolution 101 because my intent as a coach is never to cause harm. But just before the weekend, I did a very intense coaching call and I got a very lengthy email about how she felt certain parts of that coaching situation went. But her language was heavy laden with, I felt attacked. I felt ambushed. I felt like I was on the hot seat. And I coached her back and I said, you might want to choose some different words, hmm. right? Because people need good conflict language to not escalate the situation, they need to use more neutral language. Yes. You know, so Elaine, be careful quick, how you speak. Yeah. Instead of saying, I feel attacked or why are you being so mean? I'm feeling uncomfortable. Two totally different, right? Elaine, I feel like you're attacking me in this conversation versus Elaine, I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable with that's right. Well, and, and the other situation, there are two Tracy, and I, this is my conflict filter. So I teach people to go like this, because what, what this is, is I don't care what you say to me, Tracy, I'm so angry at you. By the way, I've been angry at you for about five or seven years. And I, everything, even just your presence and you coming into my space makes this go up. And so you, everybody in farming understands dirty filters on the combine when you have to air bowl them out or whatever, oil filters on tractors, whatever right? We have filters to take out crap and impurities. So what I want people to do is drop their preconceived notion of the other person coming to have communication and give them the benefit of the doubt and, and be very clear 
it's not my intent to cause harm to you. Yeah. You've taken this totally psh, out, of, out of perspective, right? Would you like to know what I really need? And then you start talking and then you listen and you paraphrase with each other or use language back to them. So if you use the word um, that I re I'm feeling really attacked, I would say, well, it wasn't my intention to make you feel attacked, Tracy. I'm just curious, what is it specifically I did or said that made you feel that way? And then I shut up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to talk about the destructive behaviors? Yeah. Yeah. So in this conflict profile, once they've done this, it's just a 20, 20 minute online assessment, winning at all costs. So my way or the highway, like the bull in the tiny shop kind of approach to life, displaying anger. And if you've seen me speak in a lot of seminars, anger is not the thing. Anger is a secondary emotion. What's underneath the anger is hurt, deep hurt. Uh, and for farm widow moms, it's the deep hurt about bullying about the farmland because they need that farmland rent for their future income streams. Um, it can also be fear. Fear is really big for daughter-in-laws on farms because what if hap what if something happens to their husband? Do they get kicked off the farm or out of the house that the farm owns? Like there's fear. And another piece is frustration. And there's a lot of frustration from the founders because the founders have a certain way of how this farm should be run. Hey, but different is not wrong. It's different. And our son is 35. My husband's 66. They have different personal personalities and styles, which you've already done an assessment on, but they make a great team because one's strong for people and one's strong for task. But it still doesn't mean that there is an irritation. Another one would be demeaning others like, oh, she's an idiot or we'll just keep the women out of it. That's still happening, Tracy. And I'm just going, ah, you know, we have a lot of smart, well-educated women in agriculture with great agronomy skills and livestock skills and vet skills and you name it. But there's some inequality happening there by demeaning and saying, oh, you know, and, and using harsh language on others, retaliating, mm -hmm. like locking gates, throwing shovels. Like, I don't want to even talk about these things, but av here's the big one, avoiding. Oh. And so what, in my new mind, uh, membership course, one of the themes that we'll use one month is called how to get people to the table. And for a lot of young farmers, it's how do, Elaine, how do I get my grandfather to the table? Not just his father and mother, but his backup is happening two generations away, not even just the one above him, right? And then yielding. Yes, dear. Anything you say, dear. Yes, dear. Huh. And I, you know, someone has very jokingly say the best way to stay married is just to learn and memorize the words. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Well, that's not good. Yeah, your eyes are getting pretty big there, Tracy. <laughs> Excuse me, I need to cut this interview while I go choke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do a choke timeout. Not my yes. farm. Yeah. No, no, of course not. Yeah. But the thing is, remember what I said about decision making? If there's collaborative decision making between equals, that's a very positive thing. But if the other person is is always cowering back or yielding in a negative way. I mean, I'll yield on things that on a scale of one to 10 are like a two. They're not that important, but I'm not going to yield on spending thousands and thousands of dollars on farm equipment without knowing the why behind it. Right. And then, and of course, when we said the positive emotion was expressing how this makes you feel, the, the antithesis of that is try me, Elaine. I'm just not going to talk to you at all. And I've had that happen where I pass the bowl and the guy says, no, I'm not saying anything. I said, great. Then you're very clear. I'll be leaving now. He says, no, no, you can't leave. I said, absolutely I can because I cannot facilitate good coaching and insights and, and making choices to move forward with someone who's going to be aloof and keep it all in their head and not share it with the rest of the group. And then another one that's very common, especially for people who get in this downward spiral of high anxiety, Tracy, is poor self-talk or self-criticizing. Oh. Well, maybe I am stupid, or maybe I am worth nothing, or maybe I don't contribute anything to this ranch. And what's very interesting, how the report looks, and I, I, I won't show you, and I'll just kind of do it graphically with my hands, is there's an average bar in the middle of the 9,000 people in the data that this was first researched on. 
what you want is you want really low scores for, for destructive behavior, right? I have some guys that are off the chart. I believe it. And then I'll get people who don't create solutions and are very low for ex, um, expressing emotions. And so when I'm coaching them, I'm leaning in like this and I'm saying, okay, can you just tell me from what she just said, how does that make you feel? And now people say, oh, Elaine, this is counseling. No, this is expressing how the conflict is making you feel because a lot of people are guessing and making really wrong assumptions. And then we get that story in our head. What right? you're telling yourself. How many farm families, small little rant, but each of the members in farm families, the longer we leave stuff, don't we just build these big stories in our head and they get blown up and out of case, out of context, you know, and I've been guilty of it too, where all of a sudden mm -hmm. it builds up in my head and then it comes out. It's like, oh no, that's not the case at well, all. Well, it's really, it's really, that's, that's the power and the, and what I call um, the miracle in a way of those family meetings that are safe and respectful and facilitated. Because I remember one time a woman in tears about how her uncle got the quarter section and she wasn't allowed to have even an offer to purchase on it. And it came out in the meeting that the reason that she was in tears was because that's where her and her husband got engaged, but nobody else knew that, right? And so once they found out the story, why? I'm just curious, Jane, why is this so important to you? And then she tells the story and then everybody's going, oh my goodness, now we understand. And, and so Brene Brown, of course, who you know has very powerful work with all her research, says being clear is kind. Oh. And I, and I say, love does not read minds. Like, I'm sure that's somebody else's quote from some trad, you know, some, some study or whatever, but it's just really important. And the other thing is, is we're not done yet, Tracy, because the other part of the profile is what triggers you, what pushes your hot buttons. So here we have young farmers, you know, what pushes their heart buttons is being micromanaged by OCD parents who don't think that they can do anything on their own, even though they've been back from college for 11 years and have kind of proven themselves, right? Or people who won't speak to you, like I mentioned before, or maybe you get triggered by people who are very abrasive and hostile because you grew up in a very calm, peaceful household and your family of origin. Yes, if there's conflict, that's what we do at supper by Charlie. We talk about it at supper and by the end of supper, we have some idea of where we're going next and then we all go out to the barn and do the next thing yeah yeah so this is a very interesting there's actually i think 10 different hot buttons i'll just read them off hostile micromanaging over analytical self-centered oh do we know any sort of, and that and here's another thing since i last talked to you post the great pause i'm going to call it so now in 2022 and 23 i would have never heard the word narcissism in the same context of farming, I now hear it every other month. Interesting. I am living with somebody who is so self-centered. Mm. It's all about them and they have no capacity to put themselves in the shoes of the next gen and know what it's like not to be without equity. So yeah, interesting. And then people who are unreliable keep promising things. Or people who are not trustworthy, right? Who 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 say one thing and then do exactly the opposite. So it's been a very helpful tool. And that's why I reached out to AgX in Guelph at the end of November to be able to bring this message. Because I truly believe, Tracy, if people get really good at doing conflict as a business risk management skill, their businesses will be unstoppable. And how how great will it be to be on that team? And what would your employees think if there's no walking on eggshells or drama between the conflict that's happening between the two generations or three on that farm? There's lots of good benefits. Elaine, I think I say this every single time we chat and I can't, <laughs> I can't refuse saying it again. Could you imagine if we all learned this stuff as kids, call it yes. part of the curriculum, yeah. how functional we would be as adults, how peaceful our life would be, or not necessarily peaceful, but we'd be equipped to deal with it. 
Well, and I, I think actually my grandchildren are start, are six, five, uh, six, almost five and three now, and they're starting to look at clover buds with 4-H. And I'm really going to be totally behind them by the time they turn nine. I, um, I think that, Tracy, I got a lot of that um, in 4-H in terms of how to run a meeting and how to let everybody have a voice and and being encouraged to lead, right? Yeah. And and also judging, like when you think of 4-H judging yeah. and you had to read those green sheets back in the day of comments from the judges, even as a wee little kid, you had to learn to deal with difficult feedback yeah. because it wasn't all rosy. Or when you gave your speech, oh, what I really like what you did, Elaine, was ABC. What I think you might like to change for next time is EFG. And then whatever, right? So, so I'm I agree with you, Tracy. Conflict resolution is a beautiful skill to have. And the other thing I want the, the audience to know is that Mediation Skills in Winnipeg now has a free online course called Conflict Resolution 101. It's just come out, oh. and so anybody just types in Mediation Skills Winnipeg Conflict Resolution 101 online course for free. Start there. Nice. Yeah. You know, I, I I just, I think it would be a really good thing. Amen. Okay, I'll <laughs> end my mini little rant there. <laughs> okay. okay, so you are going to be chatting with the Egg Excellence audience about clarity in questions for conflict resolution. Do you want to share a few of those questions? Well, I, yes. And so... Again, um, one of a, a really good book that I enjoyed very much is Marilee Adams, Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. And when we do a farm family meeting, at the end of the meeting, um, we get to a point where we have action steps. So we let everybody talk for about an hour and a half. And in the last 40 minutes or so, we drill down on, on what from this meeting, what do, you, what do you think are your action steps? And then at the very end, we asked them of all the things that we've talked about in the last two or two and a half hours, what was the most important thing? What was most helpful or value to you of value? And very often people will say, first of all, the ability to talk in a safe, respectful place, but then they'll say, Elaine, it's the questions. Mm -hmm. So here's a powerful question. By when, oh. by when mom and dad, will you have your wills updated? By when will you be ready to share with us more financial transparency about the income stream that you need for your lifestyle for the future or for what we might be able to get as a percentage of equity from the farm? So by when is a very powerful question, Tracy, because it puts that that second C that I talked about, the power of timelines into place. Yeah. Um, another powerful question is, what is it that you need? that you're not getting oh that's nice in the family or on the farm and dick whitman has a a 9.2 i think it's called performance worksheet it's only got four or five questions talks about the strengths what strengths are you bringing to the farm people are pretty good about identifying their strengths what what are your weaknesses or what might need more work and people are hard about that right because that's difficult feedback but the third question is also very powerful what can management do on this farm to help you be more successful or to help you gain more strength and build up your strength, right? So, so, and again, it's also about personal responsibility. I spent three hours on that one page, Tracy, one time with a Southern Manitoba farmer and his son-in-law and son who are both managers of a very, very large farm. And it was a very interesting exercise because it, again, in farm teams, they don't usually stop to do performance appraisals or feedback reviews on each other. They'll do it on their hired employees who are not family. But where do you go for family <laughs> feedback? And that's why we did the personal style indicator with our family before my son was even engaged. It was quite life changing because a month later they ended up getting engaged. Can't guarantee that will happen. But, you know, that's how it worked in our family. Another question that I think is very powerful is what do you need to be successful or what does fairness look like to you in order to be successful? Because the fairness question causes tons of conflict. And then another thing is leaning in to say, I really wish 
I had a magic paintbrush and could give you everything that you expect from us as a couple and from this farm. But I need to tell you that what you're expecting is not workable. So let's look at what is workable. And again, that's difficult feedback, right? How to tell someone the truth, especially Tracy, if you have good financial transparency on the business side and good financial transparency also on the lifestyle side. And Whitman says, if you're going to, if you and I were in business together, I would also want to know what you and Anthony need for living and have some idea of what your draw is for personal lifestyle stuff, because you're my business partner. And I, the more transparency we have between the two of us, the, the stronger that business is going to be. I really believe that. Hmm. So those are, those are a couple of, and here's another question. Where is it written? Oh, I like that one. Yes. And that comes from the work of Susan Forward, who wrote a book called Emotional Blackmail. And since the day I read it, I went, oh man, if you get one gem, you and I both read a ton of books. If, if you get one gem of a, of a communication piece that can help you break through something, so my question is, where is it written that it's your role as parents to make all of your children, farm and non-farm, economically equal? Where was that written? Well, Elaine, that was written in the school book of back over across the pond from the old country. Yeah, unfortunately, that was then and this is now. And Tracy, I was speaking in Niagara on the lake to 28 grape growers. There's 500 grape growers and vineyard people that belong to the Ontario Grape Growers Association. And I was with them in a very intimate group. It was a lovely day we spent together in, in the middle of August. Before COVID, their land typically was $50,000 an acre. Now in 2023 for a vineyard, an acre of a vineyard in Southern Ontario and Niagara area, $120,000 an acre. And that doubled in three years. Wow. Well, more than double because a hundred thousand dollars would be doubled. It's more than double. So because of the reality of the capitalization and the, and, and the value of land equipment, even inventory, all this stuff, we're talking about money. We're talking about expectations around money and we're talking about debt servicing. So here's another powerful question that raises conflict. How much debt on the operating current line, can you sleep with at night? What can you sleep with with intermediate debt for equipment? And what can you sleep with in terms of long-term debt if you're going to buy a vineyard or you want to buy some more quarter sections next door to something that's touching your existing property, right? Questions. And I was on a podcast in the US where the, the, the host was quite taken aback. And he said, do you mean in Canada, Elaine, you actually encourage young farmers to take on debt? I said, absolutely. How else are they going to get ahead? And how are they? and not, of course, going to buy expensive eighty four thousand dollars half tons or pickups, but spending eighty four thousand dollars on quota or eighty four thousand dollars on a track, like something that is going to help the business be better, and something maybe even a sub enterprise where they have their own custom haying or silaging or spraying business. And have you checked out the price of a sprayer lately? I don't want to. Yeah. Well, <laughs> ours was used and still was $400,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so do you see, do you see how this all gets overwhelmed? But here's another question. And this is from my coach, Glenn Dodgeham, who I am very fond of because he and I used to work together many years ago in different case studies, but he's a Myers Norris Penny accountant who's now semi-retired semi because he's on our coaching team. And here's his powerful question, especially for farm and for ranchers and, and cattle producers. Is this a business or is this a lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And the guys with the cowboy hats and the big silver buckles, they don't like that question. Because there's a lot of cowboy identity. Nothing that there's nothing wrong with being a cowboy and having all those amazing skills. I grew up chasing cattle. I have a barber scar to prove it. I understand mixed farming, but there is the mentality of avoiding the numbers that are showing the reality of there's not a lot of viability here for more than one family and you need liquidity, farm liquidity for you to be able to go forward. So I have a um, an alliance with a company called 337.ca, the number 33, the word seven written out .ca. 
where they have a lot of farm liquidity solutions for people who are caught with um, uh, tax problems because of high net worth or liquidity around shifting equity around to, to satisfy their needs for income. And quite frankly, for some farmers who want to be more charitable. So that's exciting, Tracy, that there are new tools available to farm families to get what they see as their future business vision. Excellent. That is a lot, Elaine. That is some amazing information in there. Thank you for sharing. I know you mentioned this earlier. If people are interested in learning about their conflict style, doing the assessment, they can go to your website under shop. We'll put links in our show notes. Mm -hmm. um, what else did I want to ask you? Oh, one of my famous questions. And I'm not, and we know this, I'm not here to plug our advisors, so to speak. I always like doing a call out because there's still a lot of farm families that talking to somebody outside of the farm family would be like, ah, yeah, we can't talk to, we can't talk to anybody because our problems are so special. We're unique. Nobody would understand. And hey, all these, everything I'm saying, the fingers are coming right back here. As an entrepreneur, I didn't want to hire a coach because I'm like, oh, they're going to judge me. Oh, this, this, this. And I always bring this to our audience and ask our guests to share their thoughts on this because sometimes you don't know what you don't know until you know what you didn't know. Question, when should farm families consider bringing in a coach or some advisors? Well, I would hope that they have really good accountants and lawyers already for legal documents, their wills, their power of attorney, and navigating their business on a financial basis. But there are accountants who are great at doing tax and, and year end and that kind of thing, but they aren't really good at cash flow projections or viability or business valuation. And it just depends on who, what team you're with, right? And how deep that team goes. So you want to have advisors that are serving you well. But when do you ask for help? is when you understand that it's not a bad thing to ask for help and that you have the resources and that also Tracy, that you have good chemistry yeah. because I've been doing this work for decades now and I have families. I have this lovely Irish saying I like to use every front door looks beautiful mm. and you'll drive by a farm and say, Whoa, that's an amazing farm. And you think, Oh, everything's rosy cozy there. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I have coached families who are on the front page of very well-known national farm management magazines. It may look like things are going well, or, and it's not even needing or reaching out for facilitations. Even if things are going well, I work with families who are amazing families already, but they want to get better. And they want to do exactly what you said. They want to find out what they don't know and fill in those gaps. And so in my case, like you, I got a business coach in the uh, probably 20 my first one was probably 20 2019 2020 or was 2020 and we did a SWOT analysis on my practice your strengths your weaknesses your opportunities and threats and that's where the coaching team was born and it was very strategically laid out and now guess what I have an exit coach another a woman with an MBA who's interviewed my team and is surveying and we're putting timelines in place what are Elaine's responsibilities going to be going forward? I want to do lots more speaking and will continue to do that hopefully well into my 70s. But the intake work for coaching is being transferred to other people. And I'm still mentoring and leading and showing up for a lot of family meetings. And it's been life changing for me because I also have another hat now, which is grandma, you know, and the coach and the speaker and the writer. And so I think farm families who are hesitant, and here's the other piece, Tracy, to people listening and saying, oh, Elaine, I'm all over this. I'll be calling you next week, but I know my mother will never, or my father will refuse to. Okay, start with the people in your family circle who are coachable and who are willing to be coached. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen? Curiosity is going to kick in. What's that person doing with you? Can we see them? Can we have one discovery call with them? And, and that's what will happen is that the family will see things shifting. And, and, and this is, is, you know, remember those little mobiles that we used to have with Fisher Price people that would hang over a crib, I don't know, it was back from the 70s. Anyway, 
if you cut one of those people off, the mobile has to readjust its balance, right? Same thing happens in families. When someone in a family starts to get really good at asking for what they need or saying, excuse me, dad, could you just put your phone away while we have this conversation? And could you please look me in the eye so I know that you're hearing me? Like when you start changing how you accept other people's behavior and what you ask for, it has a bit of a cascading effect because you're not the same person anymore. You're growing stronger and other people might go, oh, has Tracy been to a seminar? <laughs> <laughs> right or has somebody listened to Tracy's podcast like what's going on here because it will when you change it can't help but have a ripple effect in the family well Elaine real quick here because I want to really speak to the audience and our listeners that I know if you read a lot of um, relationship books a lot of them will tell you we always want to change our partner and you can't change your partner so number one thing it says work on yourself and the relationship shifts. Okay. And that's the 916th wrench. Elaine phrase can only fix Elaine phrase. Oh. Because you'll get hired and say, oh, Elaine, you have to come fix my family. I said, sorry, can't do that. You have to do the work. You have to change yourself. And, and Marilee Adams has this great thing called the choice map where you get to choose every morning. Are you going to be a learner and go down the learner path and take responsibility for the choices you are making? Or are you going to be a judger and pull yourself and everybody else with you into the pit? And I think, Tracy, that's the biggest angst of young farm families. They are longing for peace and harmony on their farm. They are longing for the security of equity, not the whole farm, but a, a range and a, and a plan for continued equity to grow or pieces to get of that. And yet they are denied access. And so at some point, then they give up and they say, Elaine, we're going to start over. And I have, I met three dairy farm, farm families in Moncton, New, uh, New Brunswick in March this year, Tracy, that came up to me. I hadn't seen them in 10, 15 years. And they said, Elaine, we want to tell you the rest of the story. And it was just so heartwarming because they said, you probably don't remember what you said to us 15 years ago. And I say, well, refresh my memory. And they said, you gave us permission to leave because you didn't see a lot of traction from the other generation to have movement. And so they did. And they are so happy now because they are in control of their own destiny. And I'm not telling all farm families to leave, <clears throat> but I am giving you permission to consider it as an option, as did a Dr. Henry Cloud, who wrote the book, Necessary Endings, mm -hmm. what to do when things don't work out and you offer the wrench for the other person to change their choices or have a better language or decrease their anger or stop drinking or whatever the issue is, and they choose not to change. And that's really hard, really, really hard. I hear you. I want to pick your brain on one more thing here, Elaine, because I've seen it happen and I know this farm family over and over and over. And you even know them even better than I do. And I could be this farm family. So let's go there. And I'm going to be very stereotypical because I think it's okay. And I mean, if it's the opposite, flip it in your own mind. But Tracy married into the farm family. Okay. So yes. I don't know anything about farming. And there's not great communication with the husband, my husband, and the dad. This is hypothetical, but very familiar. Um, so I am action oriented. I want answers. I don't want to waste my life. I'm really frustrated because not only do I not have control because it's not my family, my husband doesn't know how to handle it. He doesn't like to deal with conflict. So everybody spins and nobody takes action. And I'm really annoyed. And of course, I want to fix everybody. I don't know where to go. So I spin. So this is where I'm going, Elaine, and talking to so many advisors and being a farm woman and being in this industry and still not even knowing the steps to or being in a conflict or being in the middle of a conflict triangle, right? Because yeah. the woman speaks to the husband, the husband yes. goes and tries to speak to the parent and then comes back through the husband. But it never goes, or, or in this case, daughter-in-law is not speaking directly to in-laws right so here's the thing elaine 
Now we think we have to have you or one of your coaches out to coach the farm family, but being the person I am, I would want you to coach me. So I have a hot clue on how to even deal with this. What well, are some that, how do you transition yeah. plan? You can start well, with me, right? Right. And that, and that's the other thing that people need to understand about our coaching process, because sometimes people use the word mediation and that that's not, we are trained in conflict resolution and mediation as well, but we like to call it facilitation, Tracy, because we work with, we could work with you individually, then work with your spouse individually, then bring you together as a couple yeah. and get you more flowing in a good direction, conflict dynamic wise as a couple first. Yeah. And we would do the same with the parents. And what's really interesting is if the parents are pushing off and, and, and refusing to have these conversations, my suspicion is the parents don't agree because if you have ready to leave the farm and go to town and and uh, go to the art gallery and do bible studies and quilting this is a, a case i had years ago 72 year old husband said no i'm staying here i want to be in the shop and i looked at him and i said when is it her turn to get what she needs yeah and he said elaine you're fired i said okay you're just not you're just not going to get traction buddy no he actually said that well then <laughs> and yeah well then right okay. because because coaches are not here to be liked and have and right. talk about the weather. The art of coaching is leading from behind and asking difficult questions to help give you clarity. Yeah. So for the for the in-law listening who's highly frustrated about this non-communicative farm family she's ended up, she can do the work on herself. But the other thing, remember we said another positive behavior was reaching out. Yeah. So she reaches out to the mother-in-law and she starts having conversations one-to-one -one with the mother-in-law. I'm just curious, mother-in-law, what's working for you now and what isn't? And if when you look forward into the next four or five years, what do you see? Mm. Do you want it to look like that? And she, we're doing another work right now, Tracy. Uh, one of my coaches has written about why women who are older on farms, particularly in their 70s or older, don't ask for what they need. And you know why? Because they've been trained in whatever cultural context they're coming from. I don't deserve it. I gamma. And then I have women who don't have their name on any assets. And then I look at them and I said, how did you let that happen? Oh, because I trusted da da da, right? So there's, there's many layers of why things happen, but here we have this other saying that was then this is now. So I can't change anything that happened in the past, but if you want to use good conflict behavior in this daughter-in-law that you're describing, first thing is she gets healthy and strong. Yes. In communication and conflict. Yeah. Then that impacts her marriage. And then her husband likes how that feels. And so he starts practicing and then together as a unit, they take the parents out for coffee or better yet, they put them in the back of a pickup truck. <laughs> Did you know it's really hard to leave a meeting when you're doing a hundred clicks down a gravel road? Oh, I love it. Well, what we found, that's called the shoulder to shoulder meeting. We we've done some very interesting coaching in a pickup truck, checking the cows yeah. because you're shoulder to shoulder. And, and this is just a communication body language things. Many men don't like face to face because it feels too threatening but if you walk alongside them and do shoulder to shoulder in the truck or walking the pasture or the barn, whatever, much more comfortable. Interesting. It's weird. Yeah. And again, it's just learning these little nuances of what makes people feel seen and heard. And that daughter-in-law, her voice is important and she needs to feel seen and heard. And the other thing, Tracy, is the National Farmers Mental Health Alliance going for ag informed therapy. More and more farmers are going for therapy. And I have a testimonial uh, from Jackie uh, one of, Dick, one of my poultry coach clients from Chilliwack, BC. And she said, oh, working with Elaine was amazing after we went for therapy. Because wow. first the therapy opened up the sore points and the hurt and what boundaries needed to be healthy and more language. And then when I arrived to do the, the coaching for the farm transition, they were already almost primed like a pump, like your grandma's old yep. water pump on the farm. Yeah. Clever. yeah. So you didn't have to spend the time sorting out all that. Before. No. And, 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 yeah. and we're not, we always say we are not family therapists, but I have also been in family meetings 
where the family therapist has been sitting right beside me. And she goes, oh, Blaine, you can get a lot done in three hours. I go, yes, but we didn't start here today. It's like you said, there's a lot of preparation with the daughter-in-law or the son and people as individuals, people as a couple before you bring them into the family meeting. Oh, Elaine, yeah, big people cannot people. come in unprepared, Tracy. That's not good practice because people can't get sideswiped. They need to have some degree of knowing and understanding what they need and how they can ask for what they need. As a wise lady I know says, clarity is kindness. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Being and Elaine clear. quotable. Okay, Elaine, I have thoroughly love this conversation. I could talk to you for three hours, but we will wrap it up. We'll do a call out. The conflict dynamic profile is going to be in the show notes. Yep. Your website's yep. going to be in the show notes. And I actually would love to give you the opportunity, if you have a moment, to talk about your membership. Because I know the work you do, Elaine, is so critically important. And I love the fact that you're doing a membership model so you can reach more people. So please tell our audience. So right now, um, middle of October is our cart is opening and will be closing October 19th. It's called our founding member launch. And what a membership site is, it's like a subscription to Netflix, only this is a subscription to farm family coaching. And what it will involve will be uh, modules around getting unstuck and conflict resolution 101. There'll be live coaching with me and with our team. And there'll also be a, a Facebook community where people can help encourage one another. So we've, we've done a lot on our social media posts at Farm Family Coach on Instagram and on TikTok. And so if people want to jump in to find out more, just go to farmfamilycoach.com and search membership and, um, and try it out because as you say Tracy I am one person I have five coaches on my team we are six people we have 195,000 farmers in Canada times that by a lot in the U.S. and even in Australia we're working with families across the pond too who are seeking just somebody who understands agriculture and somebody who can give them practical tools to get that clarity so we're quite excited about it and I'm excited to see what, what it transpires into because the founding members will help us design and curate how the content will be delivered from our hub after Christmas too. So it's a journey and people can sign up on a monthly basis or annual and just test it out and see if it gives them that, that extra piece of accountability and also know that they are not alone. So yes. many families say, oh, Elaine, I thought we were the only ones. I go, no, you're not. I know you're special, but I've seen this before. I love it. You know, right. I darn near did a happy dance when I seen that you were launching the membership. I'm like, yes, that is what our industry needs, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll include links to all that in the show notes. Elaine, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I am so grateful for your work and I know our industry is too. So thank you for your time, Elaine. Thanks for uh, bringing me back to share the message. And I wish everyone listening to this, that they will take the next step, Tracy, so that they will have harmony through understanding. All the best. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Elaine. And you in the audience, if you like this conversation as much as I did, like it, share it, get it out there. So other farmers can hear Elaine's great message, the work she's doing and the tools she offers you know what? Game changing for our industry. So thank you guys. And I will see you on next week's episode. Bye-bye.